You're listening to the Jewish Entrepreneur Podcast with Debbie Sassen, episode 121. Welcome to the Jewish Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Debbie Sassen. I went from being a financial advisor, author, and chronic under-earner to building my business to six figures as a financial planner and money mindset coach, and then onto multiple six figures as a full-time money and business coach. I help entrepreneurs create money-making businesses and build wealth using sales and money mindset strategies and in alignment with authentic Jewish values. Now, let's dive in to today's show. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the podcast. We are going to be talking about sales today and five selling beliefs you want to master in order to double your income in 90 days. Before we jump into the podcast, which is going to be very practical, I want to remind you that Wired for Wealth, my group coaching program for Jewish women in business, is currently open for enrollment. Enrollment closes today. If you're listening to this podcast on Wednesday, March 20th, the day the podcast drops, today is the last day to enroll. When you enroll in Wired for Wealth, I onboard you with a one-on-one strategy call where we look at your signature offer and your current business model. I give you the strategy that you need to go out into the world and sell your offer to your ideal clients over and over again so that you can master sales and double your income in 90 days. If you are interested in joining Wired for Wealth now, and I know for many Jewish women, they tell me this is not a good time. It is right before Passover, right before Pesach. Life is busy. Here's what I want you to know. The 90 days are going to go by anyway. Wouldn't it make sense for you to also focus on your business because you're going to be working in your business. We are not turning off the switch on our businesses for the next 90 days and just jumping into Passover. I know there's a lot to do as a Jewish woman, and we also want to make sure that we are mastering the skills that are going to keep us going in our businesses for the entire summer. Summer also gets busy. There is summer camp, there's holidays. And then we come back from summer holidays and we jump right back into the next Jewish holiday season. There is no time like the present for you to master business, master sales skills, and make your money in your business grow and serve your ideal clients. So go to my website, debbiesassoncom forward slash wealth and sign up for a sales call. It is time for us to really focus on you and your business, who you're here to serve so that you can make more money. All right, my friends, let us jump into today's podcast. And if you have been with me for a while, you know the amount of importance I put on selling. Selling is a skill that so many women are really reticent about. They're hesitant to sell with conviction. They think it's manipulative. They think that their clients are going to think it's all about money. I can't show up. They're going to think I'm manipulative. Here's what I want you to know. If those are the thoughts that are in your mind when you are on a sales call, your potential clients are going to feel that you're not showing up in your full leadership capabilities. And they're also not going to be 100% on board with signing up to work with you. So we're going to talk about five sales beliefs you want to master. Get your pen and pencil ready and write them down so that you can really work on them. The first selling belief you want to master is in your contribution to the world. There are 8 billion people in the world. There is not one person who can serve all of those people with her offer. And even if you, like me, speak English, or maybe you also speak a second language, even still, Nobody can serve everybody. You have your unique contribution that you are here to make in the world. Whether you are a service provider, like a coach or an interior designer, you might be a copywriter or a speech therapist, you have a contribution and you have your community, your audience of people who is looking for you. I love to think of contribution the same way I look at mascara. The last time you went into a department store or maybe into a drugstore, look at the shelves, how many different types of mascara there are. 
there's Maybelline, there's L'Oreal, there's Chanel, there's Lancome, and the list goes on. And every one of the manufacturers has multiple colors. There's black, there's brown, there's dark brown, there's navy. There's probably purple and green. I don't even know all the colors. There is long-lasting, there's waterproof, there's 24-hour mascara. You have the brush that is there to elongate your lashes, the brush to make them thicker. There is the brush that's straight, the brush that's curved. Are you with me? There are so many different types of mascara in the world, and thank God there are so many different women in the world, and each different product is there to serve a different woman. Or maybe, like me, you have multiples of mascara in your cupboards, and so some days you're going to wear the black, and some days it's going to be the dark brown, some days it's the waterproof, and some days it's going to be the mascara that you wash off when you wash your face at night. But are you with me? You too have a contribution to make to the world. It may or may not be mascara, but whatever you're here to do in the world, your people are out there. And I want you to remember that you have a special gift, a God-given gift. He put that inside of you. He knew exactly what you were here to contribute. And when you step up and you show up for your people, you can contribute more. You can make a bigger impact. And of course, you will make more money when you are willing to sell your contribution. So believe that your contribution matters and believe that you matter in the world. Something that women do when they're a little bit hesitant about the contribution that they're here to make, or they look at somebody else and say, oh, she's been doing it for longer. Maybe like my product isn't good enough yet. Maybe I need some more training or I need another certification. Let's take the example of a personal organizer, a personal organizer who can go into somebody's home and help them declutter, get rid of 50% of their belongings so there's so much space and help them buy the right containers and put things in an organized fashion. She might be thinking, I'm not an interior designer. I don't really know how to buy the exact containers that are going to serve my clients better. So let me go take a course. I think if I took an interior decorator course, then I'll be able to serve my clients better. And here's what I want you to know, because so many of us, we love to learn, right? We're going to be lifetime learners and always learn new things to add to our businesses, whether it's your skill set or your sales skills or your marketing skills or how you can add another level of service to what you're doing, there is always going to be more to learn. There is an infinite amount that we can learn to add to our products and our contribution to today. But I want you to believe that what you have is good enough to serve people today. And I want you to go out and serve people, sell to people with what you have, and don't believe if you haven't been out there for 10 years or 15 or 20 years, like the woman who lives across the street, that you cannot serve. Believe in your contribution today. That's number one. Number two is to believe in yourself. I want to share a story with you. I shared this story with my Wired for Wealth clients this week. We had a master class on money and abundance and selling. I shared this story from when I was in sixth grade. Near the end of the school year, probably the end of May, beginning of June, my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. North, called privately four boys and four girls. And she told all of us that one boy and one girl would win the Outstanding Student of the Year Award. I don't know why she decided to call us and tell us that the four of us were in the running for this award. I have no idea. It's an interesting thought. Was there something that she wanted us to do? Did she want us to do better on our term paper? Did she want us to be nicer to the other kids on the schoolyard, study harder for the tests? I really have no idea. What I do know is after that, Somebody said to my face, Debbie, it's not going to be you. You're not going to be the one who wins. Now, let me tell you that I was the one who won the most outstanding student for the girls in my sixth grade class. And somewhere in my attic, I have a trophy. I really have to find a declutterer. That's my daughter, by the way, to help me unpack those boxes that have been sitting there for decades and pull out my trophy and put it on my desk next to my life coaching certifications because it means a lot to me. But and this happened to so many of us, we have this wounded part of us inside of us, this wounded inner child. Somebody said something not nice to you and made you believe that you weren't good enough. When someone says, Debbie, you're not good enough to win outstanding student, it hurts. It's raw. It's vulnerable. Somebody's pouring salt in your wounds. 
Maybe it was a parent who gave you the impression that you weren't good enough. They were comparing you with your sister or your brother. I also had this, by the way, I I used to work for my cousin in his electronics shop, and he told me, oh, your brother, he is such a great student. He doesn't need to study for tests, but you, you need to study for tests. Now, I never took that as a negative comment. I was like, yeah, I need to study for tests. And I kind of was a nerd. I liked studying for tests. But if you grew up in a family where you were compared with your siblings, or you were in school and your teachers said something not nice to you, they made you feel like you were a dunce or you weren't good enough. There's always those report cards were like, needs to improve. You know, they talk about the students, you could invest more, you could work harder. And you might be walking around with childhood wounds and not believing in yourself. And then you have some inner work that you want to do. But here's what I want you to know, that today you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, wherever you are, you have so much life experience and work experience and wisdom. You get to believe in yourself as you are right now. You are good enough to serve your people. You need to fill yourself up with all of your self-worth and self-esteem, and not in a haughty way, not in an arrogant way, but that belief in yourself and that certainty that you can help your people is so important when you show up on a sales call. So if that's missing, that is definitely something that we work on in Wired for Wealth, and you can do your own work, do your own journaling about where you feel you're missing something. Where's that lack? Again, not in a haughty way. Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, he was the most humble of all of the Jews in the Bible, in the Torah. We know that. And yet he was also the person who stood up at the top of Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments, received the Luchot from God. He's both the prophet who spoke directly with God face to face and the most humble of all. So you can be humble and show up in all of your goodness and greatness and serve your people. Believe in yourself. Number three is to believe in your client. And this is so important because your clients are coming to you, your potential clients are coming to you, and they want something from you. Not in a wanty, graspy, needy way, but they want a transformation. They want their house to be beautiful. They want to be able to write email copy. They want to have a beautiful website. Your clients need help. They want a transformation. They want a solution. That's really what your clients want. They want a solution. Believe that you can help your clients. Even if you don't have all of the skill sets that you can have in 10 or 20 years from now, you have enough right now to serve your clients and believe in them. Believe that they also have enough right now. They have the resilience. They have the strength. They have the wherewithal. I had this exact conversation with one of my clients this week, and she was telling me about a sales call. And sometimes she gets on a sales call and she doesn't believe 100% in her client. She's thinking, she hears a little bit about their background, their life is very busy, they're overwhelmed. I was like, no, you have to believe in your clients that if they are here to do the work, and this is specifically, for example, a coach who is working with people one-on-one and your client needs to do some work as well. If you're an interior decorator and you're going into your client's house and you're doing all the work, you have to just believe that your client can make the payments. But if your client is a co-creator with you in their results, you must believe in them, that they will show up, that they will do the work, that they want to have the transformation that they're showing up for. So believe 100% in your clients. They might have tried five things before or 10 things and they didn't get the results they want. That doesn't mean anything. That is history. Can you imagine if a mommy told her baby, I don't believe you can walk. Up until now, you've only been crawling. Or up until now, you've just been standing next to the sofa, and every time you stand up, you fall down. I don't believe you can walk. Can you imagine that little baby is so strong and so sure of herself and probably a little bit defined, she's going to go out there and figure out how to walk. You have to believe in your client's ability to transform just like you believe in your kids. And I told you last week that my husband and I were on a hike. We went on a hike to support Aline, the pediatric rehabilitation hospital here in Israel. The amount of belief the physical therapists and occupational therapists 
pour into those children at Aline to get them to walk again, to get them to move, to get them, I think I told you, to ride a bicycle, you know, pushing themselves with their arms. You know, they might have lost legs, and that, by the way, is happening to our soldiers in the army right now. And may they all be blessed with a speedy recovery and get all of their faculties back again. But unfortunately, we have hundreds, probably thousands of soldiers who have lost limbs, and we have to believe in them that they can walk again with whatever extras they're going to need. But the staff at Aline believes so hard in their clients that they can get them to walk, that they can get them to talk, that they can get them to digest, that they can get them to use their arms. And we have to have that same 150% belief in our clients that they can get the transformation that they want. The fourth belief that you need to sell and make more money in your business is believing that sales are not greedy. Again, one of my clients said to me this week when we were having our class on abundance and money mindset, what if I already have enough? Isn't it greedy to sell? And this is where sales and money cross over and your money mindset that you bring with you to your sales is so important. And I want you to think about somebody who sells toilets, probably a guy. I don't know how many women have companies where they sell toilets and plumbing supplies and sinks and faucets. Can you imagine that there is an owner of a manufacturer that manufactures toilets and saying, you know, I already have enough money. I'm not going to sell toilets anymore. No, they're like, we have these amazing toilets. (laughs) They flush really well and they save water and they're aesthetically pleasing, and they're going to go out there and sell their toilets. It could be to homes, apartment buildings, hotels, Airbnbs. They're going to be like, no, we have the best toilet in the world, and we want to sell more toilets because they're so great. This is where there's a crossover between your belief in your greediness and your product. When you believe in your contribution and believe that there are more people who need what you're offering, you're not worried about being greedy. You're worried about getting your stuff out into the world. And money is just the exchange of the value that you're putting out. Your mascara is valuable. Your organizational skills are valuable. Your toilets are valuable. Your coaching is valuable. Your decorating skills are valuable. Your copywriting is valuable. You are allowed to receive money for the work that you do in the world, for your contribution. And even if you already have enough, you are allowed to receive more money. When you receive more money, do you know what you get to do? You get to give more money. You get to give to the soldiers in Israel. You get to give to Aline, the pediatric rehabilitation center in Israel. You get to give to organizations that are helping people with their mental health and their physical health. You get to help people who aren't making enough money to send them food, to help them with household help, to help them buy a washing machine. There are so many organizations in the Jewish world and in the non-Jewish world that are helping people. When you make more money, you can keep part of it and you can pass so much of it on. You can help your children with their education. You can help your children get married. You can sponsor another family. I contribute time and energy and money to an organization in Israel called Likrat Kala that helps needy brides in Israel who don't have the financial resources. The organization helps them get married. And when you have more money, you get to contribute more. So believe that it is not greedy to ask for money on your sales conversations. And the last sales belief that you need is that God is on your side. In Hebrew, we say, achron achron chaviv. The last is the most beloved. In English, you say last but not least, but God is never the not least. God is everything. So I love the translation from Hebrew. The last is the most beloved, and that is God is on your side. God believes in you. God has your back. He wants you to succeed. Believe when you show up on a sales call that God is sitting right there with you, right next to you, and he's encouraging you and he's supporting you. He wants you to show up in service of your clients. He wants you to make more money. He wants you to make a bigger impact. He wants you to receive more money. And some of that money you're going to have, you're going to keep it for your family to take care of your financial needs now. Some of that money you're going to receive and you're going to invest it for your financial future. 
And some of the money that you're going to receive, you are going to pass on to others whom you can help. It can be your 10%, the tithing, the miser that we give on a regular basis. It can be beyond that. Maybe you're giving 20%. Maybe you're just giving so much from the bottom of your heart because you have so much time and energy and money to give and you want to help more. Believe that God loves you and he wants you to succeed. That is the fifth and that is the most beloved sales belief that you can take with you into every sales call. Let me do a quick recap of the five sales beliefs you need so that you have them all written down. Number one, believe in your contribution to the world. That can be the services you're selling. It can be the products you're selling. Believe in your contribution. You are a unique child of God and you have something to give. Believe in yourself. And if there are wounded parts of you, and we all have wounded parts of us, our parenting that we received from our parents wasn't 100% perfect, just like the parenting that you're giving to your kids isn't 100% perfect, and believe that even if you were wounded from your parents, from your school teachers, from your peers, that you can heal that part of yourself, and that wounded part of you is also part of your beauty and how you are able to be more compassionate and go out into the world and serve your people. Number three, believe so hard in your clients, especially if you're a service provider that's serving B2C, business to consumer. Believe that your client can get the transformation that she wants. Number four, believe that money is not greedy. Selling is not greedy. It's not manipulative. It's not sleazy or slimy. And when you receive more money than you need in your life right now, it is safe. It is okay. It is beautiful. And some of it you can pass on and help other people in the world. And number five, believe that God wants you to succeed. He has your back. He has been with you for all of the 40, 50, 60 years you have been on this earth, and he will continue to be there and support you. Okay, my friends, that is it for the podcast today. Five selling beliefs you need to double your money in 90 days. And I want to remind you, that my group coaching program, Wired for Wealth, the number one coaching program in the industry for Jewish women is currently open for enrollment. I believe in you and I believe in your ability to go out into the world and sell and serve your people and make more money. If you are ready to join me now, I know that there's a lot to do just a month before Passover, Pesach. I know that there's work to do in our personal lives And we don't want to turn the off switch on our business, turn off the lights and disappear for another month and a half. This is your opportunity right now. And I will onboard you with a one-on-one strategy call. So you don't need to waste your time being in overwhelm or chaos about your business. I will give you the exact steps that you need right now to get more done in less time and grow your business. Go to my website, debbiesassoncom forward slash wealth and sign up for a sales conversation. And we will have a conversation for 60 minutes and assess whether joining Wired for Wealth right now is the right step for you, your business, and the people you're here to serve. All right, my friends, thank you for tuning in. I will see you next week on the podcast. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Jewish Entrepreneur Podcast. If you want to stop underselling and under-earning and close more sales, you need to clear the limiting money beliefs that are sabotaging your business growth. Head on over to debbysassoncom forward slash mindset and download my free money mindset workbook. Uncover and dissolve money blocks like hundreds of other entrepreneurs who are now building six, multi-six and seven figure businesses and creating true financial freedom.